بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن سمسك بهده إلى يوم الدين أما بعد سئل فضيلة الشيخ حفظه الله ما ي... ماذا يفعل الرجل إذا أمر أهله بالصلاة ولكنهم لم يستمعوا إليه هل يسكن معهم ويخالطهم أو يخرج من البيت Questions regarding a man who tells his family members to make the salah his wife, his children Mother, father, uncle, aunt, niece. He advises them and he tells them to make salah. However, they don't listen to him. They refuse to make the salah. Should this man live with them? Should he continue to mix with them and mingle with them? Or does he have to leave the home? Does he leave the home or they are to leave the home? فَأَجَابَ فَضِيلَتُهُ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهِ بِقَوْلِهِ إِذَا كَانَ هَؤُلَاءِ الْأَهْلُ لَا يُصَلُّونَ أَبَدًا فَإِنَّهُمْ كُفَارُ مرتدون خارجون عن الإسلام ولا يجوز أن يسكن معهم ولكن يجب عليه أن يدعوهم ويلحى ويكرر لعل الله أن يهديهم لأن تارك الصلاة كافر والعياذ بالله بدليل الكتاب والسنة وأقوال الصحابة والنظر الصحيح He says if these people never ever make salah not from time to time they leave off the salah he says they do not pray absolutely he says, then they are kuffar. They are no longer Muslims. And they have apostated from the religion of Al-Islam. And it is unlawful for a man to live with an apostate. However, he says, it's mandatory for him to make da'wah. To, in, to invite them, to call them. And he says, وَيُكَرِّرْ He should do it continually. Back to back. Once again, over and over again. Continually call them and invite them and advise them. Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide them. Perhaps Allah will guide them. He then says, and this is because the one who does not make salah and refuge itself with Allah is not a Muslim. He's a non-Muslim. And this is proven by the Quran. It's proven by the Sunnah, the way of the Prophet, وسلم, the statements of the Sahaba. He says, what is sahih. He says in clear logic. He says logic and sound reasoning. Sound reasoning is proves that Muslims who no longer make salah are no longer Muslims. Now before we move further in this fatwa, he clearly noticed that he said, لا يصلون أبدا Those who never ever pray. In other words, there are two groups of the ulama with regards to leaving off the salah. Those who know that salah is obligatory, they acknowledge that it's obligatory, they admit that they have to pray, but they're wrong. They have two groups of ulama. First, of those who say that what's meant by becoming a kafir is those who never make salat. Never. Ever. They say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. They may even come to the masjid for iftar. They may fast. His name is Fulan, he's Fulana, Shaliza, Shamaz, Ahmed, Muhammad Ali, whatever their name is. They're known as Muslims, but they never pray. And then we have those who pray from time to time, occasionally. I make Jumu'ah, but I don't make Fajr. I make Fajr, but I don't make Asr. I pray for three weeks, and then a month I don't pray. I'm, I'm depressed, I'm stressed out, I don't pray for an entire two, three months. Well, how could that? From time to time. So some of the ulama, they say that those who do not pray from time to time have apostated. And if a Muslim intentionally leaves off one prayer, they've left the form of Islam. Intentionally, not overslept, not they were sick, not they forgot about it, not they couldn't pray, but they said just, I don't feel like praying today. And then there are others who say, what is meant by that is leading off the prayer, bil kulia, bil kulia, totally leaving off the prayer, not making prayer at all. Everybody understand this? And then we have the other group of the ulama who say that a Muslim who does not make the five daily prayers and he acknowledges that it's obligatory and he or she is sinful, they're still Muslim. They're still Muslim. But that's not what we're reading right now. We didn't read that opinion. We're reading the opinion of those who say Muslims who don't pray are no longer what? No longer Muslim on the other. But that shows the danger, the danger of this issue. I'm sure all of us, start on myself firstly, if we look towards our family members, and our friends and colleagues and neighbors, you'll find people that don't make salat. And they say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And they just don't make salat on a daily basis. 
The Mufti, his opinion here obviously is that they are no longer what? Muslim. This view. He says, أَمَّا مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ فَقُولُهُ تَعَالَى عَنِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ فَانْتَابُوا أَقَامُ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ فَإِخْوَانُكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مفهوم الآية أنهم إذا لم يفعلوا ذلك فليسوا إخوانا لنا ولا تنتفي الأخوة الدينية بالمعاصي وإن عظمت ولكن تنتفي بالخروج عن الإسلام He then says As far as the Quran Then Allah says in Surah Tawbah Verse 11 فَإِنْ تَابُوا If they repent وَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ Islam is the prayer وَآتَوُ الزَّكَاةِ And give zakah فَإِخْوَانُكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ Then they are your brothers in the religion Then they are your brethren in the deen He says we understand from this verse If they do not do the mentioned things Repentance, salah, and zakah Then they are not brethren in the religion He says in the only time when Islamic brotherhood is negated is to kufr. As far as sins, alcohol, zina, things like this, the Islamic brotherhood is never what? Negated. It doesn't say he's not your brother who makes, his, who makes zina. He's not your brother who steals. But he isn't your brother who is what? From the kafirin, the mushrikeen, so on and so forth. He then says, وَأَمَّا مِنِ السُنَّةِ فَقَوْلُ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ بين الرجل وبين الكفر والشرك ترك الصلاة أخرجه مسلم وقوله في حديث بريدة رضي الله عنه في السنن على عهد الذي بيننا وبينهم الصلاة فمن تركها فقد كفر He says as far as the proof from the sunnah then what the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in Sahih Muslim between a man and between kufr and shirk is leaving off the صلاة and it also is stated in the sunnan reported by بريدة that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the thing between us and them is prayer. So those who leave it off have made kufr. وَمَا أَقْوَالَ الصَّحَابَةِ فَقَالَ أَمِيرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ عُمَرِ بْنُ الْخَطَابِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ لَا حَظَ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ لِمَنْ تَرَكَ الصَّلَاةِ As far as the statements of the companions, then we have the statement of Umar رضي الله عنه and which he says, those who do not make salah have no share in Islam. They have no portion in Islam, no part of Islam. And he mentions a few other statements. وَأَمَّا مِنْ جِهَةِ النَّظْرِ الصَّحِيحِ فَيُقَالُوا هَلْ يُعْقَلْ أَنْ رَجُلًا فِي قَلْبِهِ حَبَّةُ خَلْطٍ مِنْ إِيمَانٍ يَعْرِفُ عَظْمَةُ الصَّلَاةِ وَعِنَاةُ اللَّهِ بِهَا ثُمَّ يُحَافِذُ عَلَى تَرْكِهَا هَذَا شَيْءٌ لَا يُمْكِنْ He says as far as logic or reasoning, as far as thinking about it, he says then doesn't make any sense for man to have faith in his heart, faith in his heart, the, the smallest, most minute, amount of faith, like a mustard seed, like a grain, like an atom, like a piece of sand. Is it possible for someone to have this amount of faith in his heart and not make salah? And to know what Allah says about salah and how Allah talks about salah and Islam and salah and never ever make salah. He says that, uh, that what? He says that doesn't make any sense. That's impossible. For someone to have iman in their heart and never ever do what? Never pray. Not even once. He then says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, وَقَدْ تَأَمَّلْتُ الْأَدِلَّةِ الَّذِي اسْتَدَلَّ بِهَا مَنْ يَقُولُ أَنْهُ لَا يَكْفُرُوا فَوَجَدْتُهَا لَا تَخْرُجُوا عَنْ أَحْوَالٍ أَرْبَعٍ He then discusses the other argument and the other side of the other ulama who hold the view that they are still Muslims and they're just sinful and they're still what? They're just sinful. He says, and I found that these proofs and evidences are no more than one of uh, four categories. We're not going to mention this entire fatwa. This is just one fatwa of one alim, of one mufti. And the point is the danger of not making salah. Regardless whether this is the right opinion, whether they're still Muslims, regardless. We're not here to debate that and to discuss that. We're here to show the danger of not making salah. Just think about that. Your wife, your son, your father may not be Muslim anymore. So when's the last time you advised them and spoke to them? Talk to them, help them out. You walk by, you come in, you leave. Every day you don't say anything. Salah comes in, Salah goes out, you're still sitting on the love chair, on the sofa. Your children come home from school, they play sports. The Dhuhr comes in, the Dhuhr goes out. Asa comes in, Asa comes out. And we don't say anything, we don't do anything. As if it's normal, as if it's acceptable. So it's very dangerous. So a person may be living, walking and talking, eating and sleeping, and they may be an apostate from Islam. 
Whether it's this opinion or whether it's that opinion, but it's dangerous. And who wants their soul to be in the hands of a mufti's fatwa? He dies, make janaz on him, don't make janaz on him. Make du'a for him, don't make du'a for him. Who wishes to be like this? A woman may be married to a man who doesn't make salah, and her husband may be what? An apostate. And it's haram for her to remain married to a man who is a what? An apostate. This is extremely dangerous. Uh, the concept of salah today and how many people have just taken it so lightly not to pray. Unfortunately, may Allah help us all.